Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpa bana chapam Anima di biravritam mayukai Raham mityeva vibhava ye bhava Banda Sainya Vado Dhyukta Shakti Vikramaharshita Nitya Parakramatopa Nirikshana Samutsuka Banda Putra Vado Dhyukta Bala Vikramanandita Mantrinyamba Virachita Vishangabadha Toshita Namaste. So let's continue with Lalita Sahasranam. You know, it always amazes me that when I post a video like the, you know, the ultimate, super incredible, amazing, fantastic new meditation practice, it gets lots of views, or at least it gets, you know, more views than Lalita Sahasranam videos. <laughs> like, look, if my meditation videos are any good, it's because I got realized, right? But then the question is, how did I get realized? What were the tools I used? How did I get the background? How did I get the karmic credits to deserve self-realization? And of course, the answer is through worshiping the holy names. Starting when I was about 25, I was chanting the holy names regularly. Maybe not the same ones, but still, uh, names of Vishnu in this case. So I was chanting and chanting, and when I retired in 2001, First thing I did was go to Kauai. Kauai is a beautiful island in Hawaii. And I lived in a coconut orchard. And I simply chanted. I lived in a tent. And I was outdoors most of the time. And I just chanted for six months. Every day, more than eight or ten hours a day. So you see, if you want to attain self-realization, you have to use these tools. You have to qualify yourself karmically to deserve the final realizations. And so these holy names are the tools. So it always amazes me, you know, when people just want to ignore the, the really important tools and just jump to the result. Well, of course they can't. And what happens is they try to jump up to the higher stages and they're not qualified, so they just fall down. I see it here in Tiruvannamalai all the time. People come and, you know, they take some fancy Sanskrit name and they'll start wearing some kind of weird costumes, <laughs> like hippie clothes, you know, and, and, you know, and bowing a lot, you know. <laughs> And then, you know, after a couple of weeks or a month, they go back home to their jobs and their families and all of this. You know, so they don't really get anywhere. They just pretend. It's like a game. It's like, ooh, let's play sadhu. You know, it's childish. Real self-realization comes after many years of doing the basics, doing the boring fundamentals, like Playing an instrument. Huh? How do you get good at playing an instrument? You do the scales. Andre Segovia, probably the best guitarist ever, used to practice two to four hours a day, even when he was in his 80s. And people asked him, why do you still practice so much? He said, well, if I don't practice for one day, I can hear the difference. If I don't practice for two days, my wife can hear the difference. And if I don't practice for three days, 
my friends can hear the difference and that's too much. So I practice fundamentals every single day. And we should be that way with spiritual life too. Now the namas. Bhanda sainya vado jukta shakti vikrama harshita. Lalita was delighted, very pleased, harshita, huh? joyous, when her army defeated the army of Bhandasura. And Bhanda, of course, means ignorance, duality, ego, foolishness, and all like that. And sainya, the, the word that means army, also means duality. So she not only defeated ignorance, she also defeated duality. And she loves this, you know, this is her thing. <laughs> so she is really pleased when one of her devotees defeats duality. And how do we do that? Through practice. There is no shortcut. You have to do the work to deserve the result. Next. Nitya parakramatopa nirikshana samutsuka. Nitya here refers to the Titi Nitya Devis. We talked about them earlier. That they are, uh, they represent rather the, the stations of the moon, not the phases exactly. Uh, it's called the, the fingers, the digits of the moon, huh? because there's 14. One, two, three, four, five. This is how we count in India, <laughs> on the joints of the fingers. So counting the joints of the thumb, there's 14. And so the 14 stations of the moon are the 14 days of the lunar fortnight. The bright fortnight when the moon is waxing and the dark fortnight when the moon is waning. So these devis, these Titi Nitya devis, they each control one day or one titi. Uh, a titi is when the moon enters this particular phase or kala. Kala means a part. Uh, so these 14 kalas are calculated astrologically. They don't necessarily correspond with the calendar day. So as usual, <laughs> The Vedic system is a little bit different than what we're used to. So the point is that when the fundamentals of spiritual life are practiced regularly huh, in a dedicated way and accurately according to the instructions in the scripture, the results accrue like interest in a bank account over a long, long time. And in a similar way to uh, financial interest, they're also uh, exponential. So in the beginning of an exponential curve, it looks almost flat. There's hardly any progress. And for a long time in spiritual life, it's hard to see any progress. A lot of people give up because they're not seeing anything happening. Or, but they don't realize what's happening is very subtle. And it's not the addition of something it's the subtraction of something, the subtraction of maya, illusion, ignorance, duality. So when you get to a certain point on the spiritual path, then it suddenly begins to climb radically. And as it gets toward the end, towards the final enlightenment, it just gets faster and faster until you think you're just going to break out of the universe. And then you do. <laughs> So next, Banda Putra Vadodyukta Bala Vikramanandita. Bala is the daughter of Lalita, and she's like nine or ten years old. So Lalita didn't want to take her to the battlefield. She said, No, honey, you stay home. <laughs> but uh, Bala insisted on going. So just to show that she's not just an ordinary kid. <laughs> she and her assistants killed Bandasura's two brothers. 
How is that possible? Well, first of all, Bala means child, but it also means strength. So she is a kind of strength, a kind of power of the, the Devi, the Shakti, the goddess. And she has a mantra. And one of the first mantras that you learn in the Sri Vidya after the Atma Bija mantra is the Bala mantra. Bala mantra also uses the Atma Bija. So it's a, a next step. And this gives spiritual strength. Like the main syllable, the main Bija in the Bala mantra is Sauhu. And we went over the Bija Sauhu in the series on Mahasodashi Mantra here. So you can look at that and uh, try to understand the power of this syllable. So Bala has a lot of power and she's called the Anga Devata. So each of the main Devis, Lalita, Mantrini and Varahi have Anga Devis, meaning their limbs. Anga means a limb. So these goddesses are the power, the potency, the weapons in many cases of these great goddesses. So the sons of Bandasura represent, there were 30 sons, huh? and they represent the 30 tattvas, except for the non-dual tattvas, there are 30. Uh, so these 30 tattvas are the sons of Bandasura. They are the sons of ignorance, foolishness, ego, duality. And so when Bala is invoked, she kills all these tattvas. That means she removes them from our consciousness. Next, Mantrinyamba Virachita Vishangavadatoshita. Lalita was delighted when her daughter Bala killed the sons of Bandasura, especially Vishangavada. Vishangavada means dark brown slayer. Huh? Nice name, huh? And Visukra means full of semen. <laughs> these, are the, these are the brothers, huh? <laughs> the brothers of Bandasura. <laughs> so these demons were created from Bandasura's shoulders. And the troops of Lalitai killed them very easily. Why is that? Because lust and ignorance cannot stand in the presence of enlightenment. Now, lust and ignorance are both products of ego. Because of ego, we feel entitled, you know, to gratify our senses in any way that we see fit. But actually, these things keep us in the material world. You know, we think this is wonderful, this is great, this is pleasure. No. It's actually suffering because you cannot separate the act and its result. So the karma that we get from acts, for example, on TV, there is a lot of violence. And we see people going around just killing people like for no reason, as if it's nothing, right? But what they don't show is the inner degradation that takes place and the karmic retribution that happens, if not in this life, in the next. So one can do all kinds of nonsense in this life and seem to get away with it. But there is no cheating the law of karma. And the law of karma comes back and gets them in the end. So. When these are killed, these demons then don't have any more influence over us, right? And there's a hidden bija in this nama, and that's the bija vi. The root of this bija is va, 
and Va helps in attaining supernatural powers. The power over lust, power over the mind, power over duality, these are supernatural. Now, these are not in the ordinary uh, world. Now, they can't be observed by scientists or anything <laughs> because they're inner powers. They're psychological or spiritual powers that we use to overcome the things that trap us in the material world. And one more thing is that Mantrini Devi, of course, is the power of mantras. And mantras allow us to defeat the Vishanga. Vishanga means desires arising out of illusion. So in other words, here we go again, you see, the actual weapon that brings victory and self-realization is the practice of these mantras. And mantras like Lalita Sahasranama are the potent weapons in the fight against illusion that bring us to the doorway of true self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.